So these days a lot of your gadgets, they don't even come with a plug. They come with one of these things, a USB lead, and then you have to go out and buy yourself an adapter. You have to plug the adapter in, and then you've got loads of these USB leads knocking about, and it's really annoying. So if you want to learn how to swap a normal socket like this for one of these fancy USB sockets, well keep watching because I'll walk you through it step by step and show you how to do it easily, quickly and safely. Right, so first of all, unplug anything that's plugged into the socket. Get all that clunkiness out of the way because we ain't going to need that anymore. Now what I want you to do is grab hold of a socket tester. It's a simple little device but it's a DIY's best friend. And this does two things. First of all, it tells you if there's power going to the socket, which is probably its most important use. And the second thing it does is it tells you if the polarity is correct and if the socket is wired up correctly. So let's plug that in, switch it on, and you're going to hear a tone and see some lights. So you can see this socket has power going to it. Now we need to make sure that we're safe to work on the socket. How are we going to do that? Well let's head over to the consumer unit and we will turn off the power to the circuit that this socket is on. And you need to leave your socket tester turned on and because they're quite loud in some cases you'll be able to hear the tone from your consumer unit so you'll know when the power goes off. So here we are at the consumer unit and inside the consumer unit you'll find a series of MCBs or miniature circuit breakers and each one of those supplies power to a circuit in your home. However, we won't 100% trust that these are labelled up correctly and that's why for safety reasons we're using other means to prove dead before we go and change that socket. But let's hope it's labelled up correctly and we'll turn off this 32 amp breaker just here labelled sockets down. And if you listen in the background, you can still hear our socket tester ringing away. So we should hopefully, if we've got the right circuit, hear that socket tester turn off. Okay, so you can hear the socket tester's gone off. So we're pretty confident that the power's gone off to that socket we're working on. If that didn't work for you and your socket tester's still sounding, you are gonna need to turn off each breaker until you hear the socket tester turn off. Now to make this job as safe as we can, we need to use a lockout kit to make sure that nobody can come along and turn that circuit back on. So this is a lockout kit. There's many different types out there. Some of them are ridiculously expensive. You don't need anything fancy. There'll be links to all the tools that I use today in the description anyway so you can go and grab yourself one and keep yourself safe. To use the lockout kit just pop it over the MCB that switched off and use a flathead screwdriver to turn the little screw inside. Don't need to do it too tight just nip it onto the MCB. So that MCB now can't be turned back on. We grab the supplied padlock and the notice and just lock that on there, remove the key and take the key with you until you've done the job. So our socket tester has gone off and we can be reasonably confident that this socket no longer has any power going to it and that we are safe to continue. So now we're gonna take the face off the socket and there's one more test that we'll do before we change that socket. Let's take the face plate off. For this you want an insulated flathead screwdriver. You could use a normal screwdriver but I do recommend using an insulated one. Now we'll just remove the two screws that are on the face plate. Just pop the screws to the side for now. And you'll now be able to pull the socket away from the wall, enough to expose the terminals in the back of the socket. So we've got the socket pulled away from the wall. We can see in the back of the socket now, and you can see that there's two cables there, and that should indicate to you that this one is on a ring, it's not a spur off. So we're fairly confident that this socket has no power going to it. But before we go jamming our hands inside or fiddling around with a screwdriver, what I would suggest you do is use a voltage tester to prove dead. You might be confident that the socket tester gives you all the information that you need, but we're gonna go ahead and cover how to prove dead should you have a voltage tester. So let me show you how we do that. So our proving unit here is a simple device that'll tell us if our voltage tester is working. We just insert the probes into the proving unit and you can see there we're getting a voltage reading on our volt tester. First of all we check our voltage tester on the proving unit. We then check between the live or line, depends what you want to call it, and you'll see that all we'll have here is continuity. We have no voltage being displayed. CPC to neutral. That's dead. And we're going to test CPC to live. And that's dead as well. We then use the proving unit to test again to check that our voltage tester did not go faulty whilst we were carrying out our test. 
If you don't have a proven unit, you can use a known source of electricity. So you would test that on a known source of electricity, you'd then carry out your test and go back to your known source of electricity and that would do the same thing. Just make sure you've got good access to the back of the socket and begin to undo some of the terminal screws. In this case we have the new colour wiring so we've got brown for live, blue for neutral and green and yellow for earth or CPC. So first of all we'll undo the terminal screw on the, uh, on the live wire, that's the brown one. Just undo that little terminal screw and then you'll be able to pull the wires out the way just leave those wires out of the way for now whilst we work on the others. And then we will go ahead and undo the neutral, that's the blue ones. Just move those out of the way. For now, just stick a little bit of tape around the neutral wires to stop the RCD from tripping. Now you can go ahead and remove the CPC or earth. Just undo the terminal and leave the cables out of the way for now. So you can see that is the old socket removed and now we can go ahead and upgrade it to the USB socket. So I'm upgrading to one of these. It's a British General USB socket. It's a two gang socket. Essentially that means that you can plug in two plugs and it has, focus, the USB and USB-C in the middle there. You can get different variants but I really like the British General ones. Um, I'll put a link in the description to where you can grab one. So you can see that the terminal screws on the British General sockets are pre-undone for you. So the next thing we need to do is take note of the terminal. So we've got CPC and Earth and you can see they're labelled on there for us with colours as well. And then we've got neutral, which is the blue one, and the live, which is the brown one. Uh, some of these may be different ways round. They're not always in the same order. So do make sure that you take note of what each terminal is labelled as. You have a couple of options with your earthing. You have a terminal here and a terminal here. You can use either. And that will also earth the screws. The screws that go through the faceplate will earth the knockout box as well. So let's go ahead and put the wires into the terminals. Guys, before we do, if you're not already a subscriber, do make sure you subscribe because you don't want to miss out on all the stuff I've got to come. And hit like if the video's helped you out as well. So we'll pop the earth wires into the earth terminal, both of them. And just make sure that you have no exposed copper. And then we'll do up that earth terminal nice and tight with our screwdriver and just give them a little tug because sometimes especially when we've got two wires in each terminal you don't get good contact and a wire could pop out so make sure you give them a little tug next just take your insulation tape off the neutral wires and it makes it easier if they're bent over like a swan neck and then just pop the neutral wires into the neutral terminal do up the terminal screw nice and tight and again, just give it a little tug to make sure it's in. And lastly, we'll do the same with the brown wires. That's the live ones. Push them in all the way and then do up the terminal screw nice and tight. Just give them a tug just to make sure they're not going to come loose. And it should look something like that. Now we want to make sure, especially because this is a 25mm back box, that the cables are not all bunched up. Because if they are, and we try and push this socket back, what we could end up doing is damaging one of the cables. If it was a 35mm knockout box in the back here, it might be a little bit easier. So let's just make sure that those cables are nicely spaced out and that they've got a little swan neck on them so that when we push them back, you can see there just about that they will actually form the shape of the box rather than getting all bunched up. So that one there just wants to be pushed a little bit more into the corner. So they're nicely spaced out now, and we can roughly push that socket back to the wall. And you can see that that socket is fairly easy to push back and get flush with the wall. If you find that there's lots of tension and you're having to put loads of force on the socket, there's a problem. You need to pull the socket back away and see what's fouling those wires and why the socket's not going back. Don't go ahead and try and screw it on and jam it on because you're just going to end up either damaging a cable or damaging the socket or creating a situation where it's unsafe. Grab the two little screws that were supplied. Just have a little look and you'll just be able to see where the lugs are and you can just get them screws started by hand. Push the socket back to roughly where you want it and just do those screws up. But don't tighten them all the way up yet. We want to leave them so that the socket's a little bit loose, just a little bit, because we want to level the socket. There's nothing worse than seeing a socket that's not level, it's terrible. So grab a little level, little Gary Neville, 
Put that on the top there. And once you're happy with the level, just nip up the screws. Don't over tighten them. So the socket's tight, it's nice and level. So let's go and turn the power back on and test the socket to check it works. So we can now remove the lockout kit from the MCB. Just take the padlock off and then we'll be able to turn the MCB back on. And the last thing to do is to give this socket a test. But guys, we've barely touched the surface with DIY electrical. So go and check out one of these videos because you're probably gonna like them as well. Right, so let's use our socket tester to give this a quick test. And you can see we have no faults on the socket. And we'll give our USB a test as well. There we go. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one.